Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about error approximation approximations, which is essentially just when you're taking a series and you're adding up some of the terms, how many of those terms will you need to add up to get something fairly accurate? Um, and then how do we then measure how accurate that approximation is? So we're gonna specifically talk about alternating series first. So what, for a convergent alternating series, when approximating, the sum of the series by using only the first n terms, the error will be less than or equal to the absolute value of the n plus first term. This is the next term or the first unused term. Um, because remember, one of the characteristics of an alternating series um, in order for it to converge is that the terms need to be decreasing in absolute value um, as you keep uh, calculating those terms. So note that the uh, next term, the n plus first term, that's going to be larger than the n plus second term, the n plus third term in absolute value. OK, so number one says approximate the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus first uh, times 1 over n factorial by using the first six terms. OK, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this sum which is in fact alternating because of that negative one to the n plus one. And we're gonna approximate it by just computing the first six terms. So the first term we're plugging in one, we get negative one squared times one over one factorial, that's just one, right? Minus, we're plugging in two now, negative one to the third is negative one, so it is gonna be minus. Um, times one over two factorial, which is just two, so we get a half. Then we have um, negative one to the three plus one, so negative one to the fourth, that's gonna get us a positive term. No, it's alternating, right? Um, times one over three factorial, which is one sixth. Minus, so we have, uh, let's see, three more terms to go. So we're gonna plug in uh, four to get the fourth term. It's gonna be a negative. 1 over 4 factorial is 24, so 1 over 24, plus we're going to get a positive. We're plugging in 5 to get that fifth term, um, and so we get 1 over 5 factorial uh, would be 1 over 120, and then we have one more to go, so minus to get the sixth term, we plug in 6. 1 over 6 factorial, get, we get 1 over 720, and so if you punch that into a calculator. We're going to round to three decimal places, um, which is about 0 0.632. Now note the error of this approximation is basically if we were to add up all of the unused terms, so the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, all the way off to infinity, right? If we were to add up all those terms, that's actually exactly how inaccurate this approximation is. Um, so you can think of the error as the tail, right? All of those terms that we actually didn't end up using in our approximation. Okay, so number two says, find the upper bound for the remainder um, for the approximation from example one. So basically it's the next term. The next term, which in our case is the seventh term. And so the seventh term is if I plug in seven for n, negative one to the eighth would be a positive one times one over seven factorial is 5,040. So the next term would be one over 5,040. Pretty small number, right? So it doesn't take long to get a fairly accurate uh, approximation to this summation. So the alternating, series error is what we call this, is less than or equal to 1 over 5,040, which if you punch that into a calculator, that's 
0. Point, we're going to go beyond three decimal places because you kind of have to, 0. 0.000198. So this is actually a pretty accurate approximation to this, um, this series. OK, so now it says, find the upper and lower bounds for the actual sum of the series in example one. OK, so. The way this is going to work is we essentially want to um, determine the upper and lower bound. So the upper bound um, is going to basically just fall, say, state that our series is going to fall somewhere between what we thought it was, 0 0.632, and um, including that error, right? So we can get um, a fairly, fairly close to the actual sum. Um, and so what we have here is um, our sum from example one was one minus a half plus one sixth, right? Minus one over 24 plus one over 120 minus one over 720. That's what we approximated it to be. And we know that this is less than or equal to, because there's more stuff that needs to be added, the actual sum, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 um, times 1 over n factorial, which then is um, less than or equal to basically that same sum, but including that seventh term, right? Um, and so we have one minus a half plus one six minus one over 24 plus one over 120, whoops, um, minus one over 720, but plus that seventh term, one over 50, 40, okay? Now, um, keep in mind, the reason we had to set it up in this way is because the last term, that seventh term that we didn't use was actually a positive. So it's making um, the answer we got in number one larger, right? Um, so it's basically saying that number one, that's an underestimate because we still had to add one over 50, 40, right, to it. Um, so that's why the lower bound was our approximation and the upper bound was adding that error. However, if your next term was negative, it would be reversed. Your approximation would actually end up um, being your upper bound, and then you'd subtract off, right? You'd include that next term to be your lower bound. So keep that in mind. Um, we don't. I don't think there is an example on these notes that does that, but I think there are some um, on homework, um, so be careful. OK, um, and so if you were to punch this into a calculator, we actually already did that lower bound was just our answer from number one. We're going to round to more than three decimal places because once again, adding one over 50, 40 isn't going to make a whole lot of difference with only three decimal places. So let's do um, let's do five decimal places or maybe six. 0 0.631944 is less than or equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one times one over n factorial, which is less than or equal to 0 0.63214. Okay. Um, I guess I only did five decimal places for that one, but you get the point. Um, we've actually squeezed, I think kind of squeezed there, <laughs> um, but we've actually squeezed the sum so that we actually have a fairly accurate idea of what the value of this is. Um, really, we have three decimal place accuracy here for the most part. Okay, number four, it says approximate the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n over 2n factorial with an error of less than 0 0.001. So the way that this works is essentially you want to add up all of the terms and, and you exclude or you stop at the term whose value is less than 0 0.001. So we just need to figure out where we need to stop here. So let's take a look. We have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the nth power over two n 
factorial, and we're going to approximate that with an error less than 0 0.001. Okay, so let's start looking at these terms. So the first term, it looks like it's indexed at 0, so we're plugging in 0 for n. Negative 1 to the 0 is 1. 0 factorial is 1, so our first term is 1. Well, that's definitely not less than 0 0.001, so that needs to be included in our sum. The next one, we plug in one. We get one, negative one to the first is negative one, so it's gonna be minus. Um, two times one is two, factorial is two, so we get one half. That's 0.5, that's way bigger than 0 0.001. We have to include this one and keep going. All right, our next term, we plug in, let's see, two it looks like, so negative one squared is one over four factorial is 24. So we have one over 24. That is still not less than 0 0.001. So that needs to be included. All right, we get minus one over 720, it looks like, because we're plugging in three times two is six factorial. Okay. That is still, in absolute value, not less than 0 0.001. So we actually want to include this. Now what happens with the fifth term is you end up getting, um, and it's, it's positive, but 1 over, well, it's going to be, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 times 2 is 8 factorial, which is 40,320 which you can imagine is pretty small, um, that is definitely less than 1 over 1,000, right? Which is 0, 0, 001. Um, and so we don't want to include that fifth term. This approximation, 1 minus a half plus 1 over 24 minus 7, 1 over 720 is going to get us um, an approximation with an error, since this guy right here is your error, of less than 0 0.001, so you get to stop there. And so when you punch this into a calculator, you get about 0 0.540. That's your answer. Okay, number five, it says use an elementary series to find the actual value of the series in example four. Um, and so let's actually look at that series, and it actually should look fairly familiar, minus one little itty bitty thing. Um, and so if you remember, cosine of x was one of our elementary series from the last video, and it equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the nth power times x to the two n over two n factorial. And so, it's actually identical to the series in number four if you plug in one for x, right? So if we have cosine of one, it actually exactly equals the sum from n equals zero, whoops, indexed at zero, not one, to infinity of negative one to the nth power over two n factorial. So it turns out that that sum, the exact value of it is actually cosine of one. And we were able to approximate cosine of one without actually doing any trig. Um, and it was about 0 0.540. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. All right, let's take a look at um, actually, we're just going to sum up what we just did. So this is the alternating series remainder. Um, and it, it's written out kind of fancy, but this is the way you can kind of think about it. So the alternating series remainder. Is less than or equal to the absolute value, right? Um, of we have f, um, or basically the n plus first derivative. Think of this as like your um, Taylor series, right? Of c times x minus c to the n plus one over n plus one factorial, and this is just a fancy way of saying that this is the first unused term. That's the way I like to remember it. Um, 
I don't know why that looks funny the way that's spelled. First unused term. Um, so it, it's always your alternating series remainder is less than or equal to, it's basically your error, um, the absolute value of the first unused term. Now this only works for alternating series. It's gonna be a little more difficult for non-alternating series. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. Okay, so this, for non-alternating series, we call it the Lagrange remainder. Um, and so it's slightly different and slightly more difficult. So this remainder is called the Lagrange remainder, um, or sometimes it's called Taylor's remainder, but they mean the same thing. Depends on the textbook. <laughs> okay, um, and so the Lagrange remainder is less than or equal to the absolute value. Now, this is going to look really similar to the um, alternating series remainder, except for one slight difference. So we have the n plus first derivative of, now this is a new variable z. I'm going to kind of color code here because there's a lot going on, times x minus c to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So think of this as the n plus first term of um, a Taylor series, right? OK, now z, that's our special variable we're going to talk about. So z is the x value. between x and c, c is where it's centered, x and c, okay? Um, inclusive, right? So it could be at an endpoint, which makes the absolute value of f, the n plus first derivative of z, a maximum. And so that's where the, there's a little more work coming into this because you have to find z. Um, okay, so as in an alternating series remainder, the n plus first term of the Taylor series is used. However, we are very particular about what we're plugging into that n plus first derivative. Um, and so we basically pick what makes um, the absolute value of the n plus first derivative a maximum. Um, and we're choosing on that specific interval between x and c. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So it says, estimate e squared using a Maclaurin polynomial of degree 10 for e to the x. Well, first of all, we have, um, so it, our function is e to the x, f of x, equals e to the x. And so we're approximating e squared, which means x is equal to 2, right? Um, and so if it's a Maclaurin, Maclaurin polynomial, remember that that means it's centered c is 0. So c equals 0, and that's because it's a Maclaurin polynomial. All right, so now we're going to use, um, we're going to write out this Maclaurin polynomial. Um, and you can go through the whole uh, chart like we did in that last video, right? We have e to the x. Now the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And you just keep plugging in um, your, your c. So uh, you really just end up with um, e squared is approximately, um, and we're going to use degree 10. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared over 2 factorial plus 2 cubed over 3 factorial plus 2 to the fifth, right, or sorry, 2 to the, <laughs> skipping over them, 2 to the fourth over 4 factorial plus 2 to the fifth over 5 factorial plus 2 to the sixth over 6 factorial plus 2 to the seventh over 7 factorial, right? 2 to the eighth over eight factorial, two to the ninth over nine factorial, 
and then two to the 10th over 10 factorial. Okay, so now what we're gonna do um, is we are gonna, we'll punch this into a calculator. So you end up with E squared is approximately, we'll do three decimal places, 7.389. So this is just using what we did in one of our previous lessons where we're writing out a Maclaurin polynomial um, of degree 10 for e to the x to approximate e squared. Um, it's centered at zero because it's a Maclaurin polynomial. x minus c, right? 2 minus 0 is 2, which is where all those 2 to the different powers are coming from. Remember, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So e to the 0 a bunch of times is just 1. Um, and then it's over that um, that n factorial, right? It depends on the, the term that we're on. OK, um, and so that's just kind of a little bit of review. Now, number two says we're going to use the Lagrange form of the remainder or error to estimate the accuracy um, of the, the um, partial sum that we, we found in that previous example. And so essentially, it's not just the first or the next unused term anymore. So what we need to do is, well, first off, our x was 2, right, because we were approximating e squared. And c was 0, because it was centered at 0. So what we need to do is we need to find that z, OK, such that z is in the closed interval from 0 to 2. And our n plus first derivative, or absolute value of that, right, is a maximum. Well, the n plus first derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. So what on the interval from 0 to 2 is going to make e to the x a maximum? Well, it has to be 2 because e to the x is an exponentially increasing function. So it looks like z is going to be 2. And then if you remember, um, the next unused term would be the 11th term, right? Which just in the form of a Maclaurin polynomial, it would be um, that, that 11th derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x, um, times x minus c to the 11th power over 11 factorial. Okay. Um, and so our Lagrange error, is less than or equal the absolute value of e to the, and remember it's z, it's what we chose, e to the z, which would be two in this case, e squared times x minus c, two minus zero to the 11th power over 11 factorial. So it's not that much different from what we just did. It's just the fact that you need to find this value first, which is your z, right, um, to plug that in for your Lagrange error. Everything else is the same as what we've just done. Um, and so if you punch that into a calculator, that's about 0 0.000379. Always give enough decimal places so that it's very clear that there is still an error, because if you round this one to three decimal places, it doesn't look like there is an error, right? Uh, it's just a very small error. OK, let's take a look at number three. It says, if the fifth derivative of x equals 700 times sine of x, and if x equals 0.7, is the convergence interval for the power series of f centered at x equals 0 Find an upper limit for the error when the fourth degree Taylor polynomial is used to approximate f of 0 0.7. Okay, so we're given that x is 0 0.7. Um, our function that we're using, let's see. Oh, we don't have our function. That's okay. We don't need our function. Um, we actually are given the fifth derivative, which is really what we need. Um, it looks like we're centered, let's see. Oh, centered at zero, so c equals zero. So this is actually a Maclaurin polynomial. Now we need to find z. So we need to find 
So find a Z on our interval from zero to 0 0.7 that makes the absolute value of 700 times sine of X a maximum. Okay, now it turns out that on the interval from zero to 0 0.7, now if you think about like your sine function, sine is the shape of an S, right? It is increasing from zero to pi over two, which is, you know, greater than 0.7. So because it's increasing, sine of X is increasing on the interval from zero to 0 0.7, 0 0.7 is, um, going to make that a max. So Z equals 0 0.7. And so um, remember our fifth unused term or fifth term in the series would just be 700 sine of X because it's our fifth derivative um, times X minus C to the fifth over five factorial. And so our Lagrange error would be less than or equal to the absolute value of 700 times sine of z, which is 0 0.7, times uh, 0 0.7 minus 0 is just 0 0.7 to the fifth over 5 factorial. And if you were to punch that into a calculator, uh, it looks like we have a slightly larger error this time, 0 0.632. So, so if we wanted to get more accurate, we'd probably need some more terms. Okay, last one, let's take a look at number four. So it says, if the sixth derivative of X is a positive decreasing function, okay, positive decreasing function, find the error bound when a fifth degree Taylor polynomial centered at X equals four is used to approximate F of 4.1. Assume the series converges for x equals 4.1. And so we don't actually know what the sixth derivative is, so you're not gonna be able to get a value for this, um, but it's just kind of telling you to get through the same process. So x is equal to 4.1. That's what we're plugging into our function to get an approximation. Um, it's centered at four, which is really close actually to where we're approximating. Uh, now, because the sixth derivative of x is a positive and decreasing function, z has to be at the lower the, the lower bound of that interval from four to four point one because it's getting it's decreasing, right? And we want to figure out from four to four point one what makes the sixth derivative a maximum. Well, it's going to have to be that four endpoint. And so then um, our Lagrange error would be less than or equal to the absolute value of the sixth derivative of, now z is four, so we're plugging in four, times x minus c. So 4.1 minus four would just be 0 0.1 to the sixth over six factorial, and that needs to be in absolute value. Um, and then that's it. So you're not going to get a, a value because you don't actually know what the function nor its sixth derivative is, but it's just the same process as the other ones. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much.